And here we go. Recording in three, two, and one. So let me get this straight. It's a science fiction show about the end of Earth and people colonizing a new planet in another galaxy. And it's going to run on NBC in prime time. And they think they're going to get more than one season out of it? No. That's, that, that's not going to happen. And, and you know what? The person who said that was right. Welcome to episode 171 of Nerdery and Murdery. Big 171. I'm Zig with your Nerdery. And I'm Jeffrey with your Murdery. Welcome to another week of the highs and lows, the ups and down, the good and the bad and the nerd and the murd. Um... They had water spout tornadoes on the island yesterday, uh, South Padre Island yesterday. Did they really? Water spout tornadoes? We just oh, call it the are... island here, but yeah, they had uh, they they had at least one, and we're expecting more. Nice. Just a uh, um, well, not necessarily nice if you're in the path of it, right. but uh, but uh, those are pretty cool to see. Yeah, I wanted to go to the island uh, yesterday. We ended up not. Um, but uh, but yeah, they had they had water spout tornadoes. I I did not not heard of that on the island, so that was weird. Wow. Um, so I I had said that we have been going through the Marvel Defender series in order. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, we just finished Iron Fist season two last night. It was good, but the end of it was very convoluted. And I did almost like they were setting it up to do something else. They just never did it. Yes, they did. Did you see it? Yeah. Okay. I don't want to give away the ending. It was, it was a long time ago, but yeah, yeah, I was I was all up on that Defender stuff. Um, yeah, I, I've enjoyed I it liked it. Uh, I've enjoyed it because the the next in order after Iron Fist season two is we're going into Daredevil season three, which I've really been looking forward to. Um, but uh, but yeah, the way Iron Fist two ended, it was just I. I I didn't quite understand it. I actually had to go out onto the internet and read what the ending meant because it didn't make any sense. Um, so it, it was weird. I, you know, I've, I've, I've really liked the Defender series. Um, I wasn't as happy with Luke Cage season two. Um, I especially didn't like the way it ended. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's been it's been really good. I can't I can't wait to start start into into Daredevil season three because I've heard that season three was one of the best mm -hmm. um and i don't think they're doing any other defender series except for daredevil born again mm -hmm. so you know it kind of sucks the way iron fist season two ended that there won't be because i i haven't heard that they're doing anymore so i i, I don't know, uh, he, he, I don't I, know. We, it, it would be nice if they could just do a second season of the defenders yeah. Just do a second season of the Defenders and we could catch all of that stuff up. Yeah, maybe two, because you know, you get you want to go into everybody's little side quests mm -hmm. and they only mm -hmm. do like you know eight to ten episodes. So yeah, maybe two series of that and mm, that would wrap that up nicely. Well, and this is old news by the time you have a random arm that keeps appearing over your head. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um and someone wanted to watch the process, like I'm telling you, it's not that interesting. <laughs> Uh, this is old news by now, uh, but did you see that Robert Downey Jr. is going to be Doctor Doom? What? Yeah. So, so with the with the firing of Jonathan Majors as Kang, they've completely mm -hmm. abandoned the Kang storyline, which okay. I think is a mistake. Um, yeah, you it, Kang looks like a bunch of different people. He can be because you've yeah. got all of his variants. You could make him into anybody. I think they would be. I, I thought they would be better served to just recast Kang. Yeah. Um, it's not like they haven't recast people before. You've got two different roadies between Iron Man 1 and Iron Man 2. Uh -huh. um, so they could have recast. So I think they kind of missed out there. But Doctor Doom is a big mm -hmm. baddie, is a yeah. big baddie. And and it's, and it can brings the potential for so much into Marvel, including bringing in the Fantastic Four, which hopefully they can finally do a good Fantastic Four movie. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, but Robert Downey Jr. coming back, I think, is awesome. Oh yeah. Um, you know, and there's all kinds of speculations. You know, is he a variant of Tony Stark that's going to be Doctor Doom? Uh, you know, because that actually happened in the comic that Tony Stark became Doctor Doom. Um, so is this going to be Victor Von Doom, or is this a Tony Stark variant, or what? But I'm really really excited that um, that, that 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 they're doing Doctor Doom. He's always been one of my favorite villains. Um, and then Robert Downey Jr. is doing it. Um, 
And then, the, and then the last thing I had, um, this has caused a huge fan outcry. Um, uh, Star Wars The Acolyte has not been renewed for a second season. Right. Um, and I liked Acolyte. I thought Acolyte was brilliant. Again, yeah. my whole point was, oh my God, they're treating the Jedi like the Psychor in Babylon 5, where they're not necessarily always the good guys. Right. You know, right. some of those decisions... I understand why they made them, but they may just, not have been the best decisions to make, you know? I personally felt the pacing in Acolyte was, was pretty good. Oh, yeah. Um, it felt less like a TV series than a movie that had been broken up into episodes. Mm -hmm. um, yep. I enjoyed it. I really, really liked it. And, and they left it so open for a second season, but they're mm -hmm. not going to have it. They've completely canceled it. Yeah, I know. It's sad because it, it's like, okay, we're actually getting to see part of the we're getting to see part of the Star Wars universe that we we never actually got to see on film. We got a bunch of books about it, right? A bunch of comics, right? But we never and, got to see that period before. And it's a great idea to do that because we have finished the Skywalker saga. Yeah. Don't end Star Wars. Go out, branch out. You can do all kinds of other new stuff. And they start have started doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I just I don't understand the the, the I, I mean granted the acolyte got really troll bombed on the internet by a lot of people which i don't understand why because i like i yeah. said i enjoyed it but once they announced that it was canceled boy they came out of the woodwork in in defense of the acolyte so it's yeah just, maybe you shouldn't have troll bombed it before maybe maybe i don't I, know i thought it was good i liked it i liked it i liked all of it um yeah. I'm, I'm really happy that we got star wars New Star Wars, new Star Trek, new Doctor Who on television, mm -hmm. and some other stuff that's just incredible. It's like, man, this is the perfect time to be a, a nerd. Just yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. You, you you don't have to, you don't have to, yes, I say that. You don't have to analyze it to death, even though that's what we do here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you don't. You you can just enjoy it for what it is. Yeah. You know? and, and talk about what you love, not what you hate. Well, you know, and you talk about that, another show that, that I'm watching and it, and it's, 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 I think it's really a funny show. Chelsea didn't really enjoy it, but I, I've thought it's really funny. So I'm continuing on my own, but it's really short episodes as con man. That is con hysterical. Is that is hysterical. I love Alan Tudyk. I really do. <laughs> um, and they make, you know, they make so many, uh, 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 inferences is that the word i'm looking for to things yeah. he really did they actually uh -huh. they didn't name it but they named an inf made an inference to uh his his appearance on justified as a bad guy which was great um but one of the episodes that i thought was so funny is in a hotel uh he ends up he ends up going to this hotel for a con um and he he runs into uh the actress it, she's not playing herself but he runs into trisha helfer uh, uh -huh. <laughs> and, he's, and he's on the phone talking to a friend about the woman he meets and he goes oh my god she was gorgeous like you know like that like that cylon on battlestar galactica you know? <laughs> and, then, and then he says no the other one <laughs> no the no, other one the other no. one no the other one no no the other the one. other one <laughs> no the other one you know what once they got past season three i got really confused so i'm not really sure at this point <laughs> So I I've liked Con Man. I think it's I think it's very very funny. has has so many guest stars in it from Serenity and other shows. The episode I just watched had Michael Dorn in it. Um, nice. So funny. Uh, and like I said, they're short episodes. Some some are as short as twelve to fifteen minutes. I think the one I just finished was like seventeen minutes long. Yeah. Um, you can get through them really quick, and they're they're very very funny. I. Enjoy it so much. Enjoy. Yeah, it so much. I mean, honestly, when you watch Conman, it's like, okay, so Tudyk and and Fillion are just being goofy. This is yeah. this is them going. You know what would be funny is if we did this, and then yeah. they just do it. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it, I mean, it's so funny because the, the 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 whole thing of the character that he's playing is centered around this character that he, the actor who plays this character in a show that's very reminiscent of Serenity. Mm -hmm. um, and he has been since that show, which I think was, was it called Specter Spectrum Spectrum. I think it's called yeah. Spectrum. Um, 
he plays a pilot in that. Um, and, and he hasn't had a whole lot of big roles since he's had some bit pieces and mm-hmm. he does all these, all these comic cons. Um, that's and, how he makes his living and he does some voiceovers. Yeah. That's how he makes his living, but he's not super successful. Whereas Nathan Fillion has remained super successful and he's still his buddy, but mm-hmm. he's really kind of, um, um, an oblivious jerk to Alan Tudyk. <laughs> um, not you know he's not trying to be a jerk, but he's just uh-huh. he's so yeah, successful. I, I think and... Ben sitting around the writers' room going, "Okay, you really need to be an asshole here." Oh yeah, definitely. I, yeah, it's great. I give give it a God, shot. It's on it's, uh, it's on Amazon Prime. Um, so give that a shot. I think it's I think it's three seasons long. Yeah. Um, <laughs> great show, great show. Anyway. <laughs> I'll let you take over on the nerdery side of the house, a show I never watched. Excellent. It's called Earth 2. It's an American science fiction television television series that aired on NBC from November 6, 1994 to June 4th, 1995. Uh, the show was canceled after one season of 21 small expeditionary group called the Eden Project with the intent to journey to an Earth-like planet called G889 in an attempt to find a cure to an illness called the Syndrome. You know, the hey, series was... Hey, hold on, I'm going to pause you there real quick because I, I have to talk about this real quick. Um, so one of the things that one of the things that uh, that we did as a leadership group at work is we created a a a, a, a chat room, a chat room mm-hmm. in, in our in our instant message system um, for our entire team under my director Mm -hmm. and it's supposed to be a space of positivity and and things like that you know we can get help there if we need but it's really just supposed to be a space of positivity well what what i what i recommended is that every one of the managers takes a week where they lead that space Mm mm-hmm and some people have done different things. They are, you know, uh, post pictures of your animals, blah, blah, blah or, or they have motivational things. Well, on, on the weeks that I take, I've been doing get to know you questions <laughs> and try to do very funny things. You know, I've done like, you know, what, what name an album that has no bad songs on it and let people list that. And it's been really cool. Um, one of the questions I'm going to ask, actually, I got to tell you what Friday's was because Friday was funny, kind of funny. And then I'll get to my point, which I'm getting there the long way. Uh, Friday's question I posted was, um, if everybody was mandated to wear a warning sign, what was yours be? Uh, and so, and everybody posted pictures of what their warning sign was. Mine was uh, highly sarcastic, thinks he's funnier than he is. Um, but, uh, but one of the... Nice. Wa- on on my next time up one of the questions that i had that i had come up with that i'm going to ask is you 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 wake up one day and you're on a new earth what is one thing that is different on this new earth just to see what the questions are and that kind of remind, made me think of that when you're talking about earth too so there you go sorry yes continue no no it's fine that's that's fine that's, that's what we do here um, so it stars uh, Billy Ray, Michael Dugan, Carol Flint, and Mark Mark Levine, and produced by Amblin Entertainment. Um, oh, I'm sorry. The series was created by Billy Ray, Michael Dugan, Carol Flint, and Mark Levine, and Universal Television, and filmed primarily in northern New Mexico around the Santa Fe area. Uh, the series' music was composed by David Beauregard, and the executive producers were Dugan, uh, Levin, and Flint. The show had a very successful premiere, reaching eighth place for the week. However, ratings dropped off quickly as the Nielsen rating shares had dropped from 23% to 9% during its run. Oh, jeez. It yeah, it has been nominated for Primetime Emmy, Saturn, and other awards in 2005. The entire series was released on DVD in a four-disc set. Um, Let's talk about those numbers for a second. If NBC got those numbers today, that show would still be on the air. Mm-hmm. So, um, in 2192, most of the human population has fled Earth to live on large orbiting space stations. Only a small number of humans remain on Earth's surface as the Earth has become mostly uninhabitable. 
billionaire Devin Adair's eight-year-old son, Ulysses Adair, has contracted a rare fatal disease called the syndrome. A condition whose existence is not acknowledged by the government and medical community. It is theorized that this disease, which only, <clears throat> which only affects children, is somehow caused by the lack of an Earth-like environment. Most children who are born with the disease do not live past the age of nine. Now you have a random leg, behind, leg and foot behind you. Do I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, billionaire Devin Adair's eight-year-old son is about to turn nine, and that's usually when the kids die of the syndrome. It, uh, so she wants to save her kid. So Devin puts together a group who will pioneer the efforts to settle a planet 22 light years away from Earth, on which other families with members thus affected can settle. The eventual colonization of the planet, however, is opposed by the government. Secret monitoring and agent inf infiltrations threaten a creation of a colony on New Pacifica. Hours before Adair's group intends to leave, a bomb is discovered set to explode the hour the ship would leave. The Eden Project leaves immediately, jettisoning the bomb before detonating uh, in the Church of Morgan. It is revealed the bomb was planted by the Council to stop the ship from leaving. Um. So... They discover the reason they know there's a bomb. They discover a hidden news feed, right? Talking about the explosion of the ship that is set to premiere two hours after they leave. Someone found it and it's like, what the hell is this? And it's a new it's a news show. So they've already recorded the news, so they know it's gonna blow up. So that's when they go to look for the, the bomb. They go, they find the bomb, they jettison it, blow it up, and head out. And then they all go into deep sleep. Um, 22 years later, they wake up, and the ship is basically falling into the planet. Stuff gets scattered all across the, this continent where they were going to land. And they end up, most of them end up landing on the other side of the continent from where they were intending to settle. Um, so they're going to New Pacifica, which is like the nicest part of the continent. Um, it basically is like New Mexico. It's real dry, but there is some water and some other things. They discover two intelligent species that live on the planet. Um, the Grindlers, um, and we don't know what they call themselves, but that's what they call them. Uh, they were probably named by, uh, some penal colonists after the monster in Beowulf. Grindlers are nomadic and traders by nature. They hoard just about anything for trading purposes and strike a hard bargain. They can be violent if provoked and possess human-like emotions. Grindlers have a very pungent body odor and produce copious amounts of saliva, which has healing properties against various diseases. Grindlers also get intoxicated on human blood and they go to great lengths to acquire it. The other intelligent species are the Tarians. The Tarians are an intelligent subterranean species native to G88-9. They have a complex tribal system. Tarians uh, also function in a group mind structure but are non-aggressive. Any Tarian who goes against the group mind is automatically cast out of the tribe. They have a symbiotic relationship with the planet and communicate through the dream plane. They also have the ability to communicate via, uh, via a high-pitched trilling and their weapon of choice is a lightning stick, which shoots energy bolts, which are supposedly channeled from the planet's magnetic sphere. With humans, their main way of communication is to, sh is to shoot warning shots at them if they approach, even if what they want to communicate is that the area they guard is dangerous to humans. Now, um, the Tarians can also communicate to you through your dreams. Uh, they have a special connection to uh, to Ulysses or Yuli, which is what everybody calls him, uh, as well as the pilot. Now, the pilot, played by Anthony Sabato Jr., um, when they're talking and they're about to go into the the run, 
He hasn't dreamed in years. And when I say years, I mean years. He is a deep sleep pilot and he keeps volunteering for missions. Um, He's like 200 years old at this point. Wow. Because he spent most of his time, that 200 years, in deep sleep, in, in stasis, basically. But it's affected his brain, in which case he can't dream until he gets to um, Earth 2. And the Tarians are able to communicate with him. Um, apparently, the Tarians had a pretty advanced society at one point, and they decided to not necessarily abandon it, but go back to a like a like a tribal way of life because it was more in balance with their planet and they're connected to it. Um, Carrions basically control the planet um, or are in a symbiotic relationship with it. Control is a, a strong word. So when a Tarian is harmed, the planet is harmed. When the planet is harmed, the Tarians are harmed. What they come to find out once they get there, and this is where Tim Curry comes in because he plays this really, really great bad guy. They're, um, Earth has been sending penal colonists to this planet for years and years and years, and nobody knew about it. So when they get there, these guys have been there again. They were asleep for 22 years. Um, they'd been sending them there a lot longer than that. Um, and they're all over the planet dying. And they're some really bad folks. But the people that run the satellites basically have almost full control over all of the population of humans. Um, there are some people that live on Earth. As a matter of fact, one of the settlers is an Earth native. And she was an Earth native because her family basically won a lottery 100 years ago. So she's one of the few people that actually come from Earth. And she's very helpful because she knows what it's like to live on a planet. None of these other people have ever seen life on a planet. They've been living on these orbital satellites. And there are hundreds of them. It's a really dark show, especially, you know, for playing on prime time at night and a lot of advanced science, you know, they don't have artificial gravity. They don't have faster than light travel. They've got close to light speed, but that's it, which is why they had to be in stasis for 22 years mm -hmm. to get there. The Earth government on the satellites still wants to stop them. Um, because, you know, she decided to start this process and they, you know, they tried to block her so many times. Well, there's, a, a they've got a couple of people on the planet embedded with them that are invested in, in letting the process fail, but because they are basically all stuck together trying to survive. Those people kind of fall away. There is a uh, Yuli's teacher um, was a criminal who had cyber cybernetic implants put in to make him a teacher. Um, his stuff kind of goes wrong and the Tarians are able to help him. And of course, Yuli has a connection to this, uh, the Tarians. Um, there are a couple of guys who were basically maintenance people on the ship. Um, that are stuck with them because after they took off and jettisoned the stuff, they can't leave because they were supposed to drop the colonists off, get back into stasis, and go home. They can't do that. So those people are stuck with them there. That's where um, – um, oh, my God, the Kurgan, Mr. Krabs. Um, Mr. Krabs? Yes, uh, the Kurgan. I have no clue at this point. Oh my God. I can't think of the man's name and I have it in my notes here somewhere. Um, anyway, well, an actor, he was one of those guys and his kid is with him and she ends up becoming Yuli's only friend. Cause they were supposed to be, they were supposed to touch down in an area with hundreds of colonists. No, there's like 50 people all together and they pick people up along the way because everyone's heading because everybody knows where that new Pacifica is supposed to be. It's on a 
there's a little bay on a sea that they're supposed to be connected to. So everybody is heading that direction and they start running into these people as they go on. You know, some of these people who they thought had died. Um, Devin uh, marshals what survivors she can find and begins heading west to the planned site of New Pacifica. It's it's brilliant and amazing, and I really wish they'd have got a second season because they really they really didn't start get getting into it until like the third or fourth episode, and they only had twenty one altogether. Mm -hmm. Because you you want to start seeing the motivation on why they wanted to stop them. It's hinted at, but it's never officially proven. Is that the elites who were running the stations, even though Devin is a billionaire, she's not one of the elites. Um, the elites that are running the station wanted to set up their own colonies on New Pacifica and leave everybody else behind. Hmm. That's that's a theory that's floated around. Again, it's never confirmed or denied. So because they, they didn't get that much. Um, when it premiered, it premiered right after Sequest, which was also another science fiction show that was running on NBC. Uh, and it ran from November 6th of 94 to June 4th, 1995, and did not get renewed. There was a fan outcry. It's like, oh my God, this show is so good. Why are you guys canceling it? Because they didn't do any time slot shifts or anything like that. It it was in that time slot with Sequest. But mm -hmm. I want to say Sequest got canceled the year after. I guess NBC just didn't want to do science fiction shows. Um, which is a shame because yes, it was expensive to produce, but once they got on the planet, once they got on the planet, it's not that expensive. They're filming in New Mexico, which is cheaper than filming in California. Um, that's the thing I think a lot of these people or a lot of these executives don't see. Yes, this first season cost us 25 million. Yeah, but you front loaded all the costs. Like with Serenity, you never have to build that model of that or that set for that ship again. It's already there. You know, the second season is going to be less expensive because you don't have to build that. It's the same with Earth 2. They didn't have to build any of the weird sets and stuff. They had a couple of little cars that they were using, um, but they were basically just Jeeps that had stuff glued on them. You know, yeah, they looked cool, but they were just cars, you know, that the, there was no more expense that they had to extol. They had, you know, the Tarians. I think they had maybe six suits all together for the Tarians that they could use interchangeably. And they had only like three suits for the Grindlers because there's only ever you would only ever saw three in a shot or six Tarians in a shot. And they were full body suits, so they were already made. I don't know. I don't get it. Um, yes, the ratings did drop, but they weren't that bad. Today, those ratings would be gold. You know, when we only had three networks, they they killed a lot of stuff just because, you know, oh, my God, you know, 50 million people aren't watching it. Well, yeah, no duh. <laughs> but they don't get that big, big a piece of pie anymore, you know. But yeah, it, it's really sad. The show is readily available in our playlist. I have, I think I've got like three episodes plus some scenes and some other stuff and talking about Earth 2. Um, Clancy Brown, that's the actor I couldn't think of his name. Mm. Clancy Brown is in it and he is great as this this protector, but he's also like an engineer and, and he's worried about his kid, but he's also worried about um, you know, the rest of the colony and getting along it's 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 brilliant um the cast is great the acting is great the writing's great um it's dark you get tim curry in several episodes because he plays a bad guy um i've got i think in our notes we've got a picture of tim curry as well as some scenes with him in there because he's just i love that character just just this bastard because he's basically enslaved some of the Tarians and he enslaved some of the Grindlers and it's just messed up. Anyway, that is about it for Earth 2 other than get out and watch it. It's 21 episodes. It's readily available. 
I've put several episodes in our YouTube page. So you at least see how it started. It's, it's brilliant. I kind of wish it was one of those things that had sci-fi been in the position, they could have picked it up and run with it, especially since all of the outgoing costs were already front loaded. Mm -hmm. You know, this would have been, yeah, this would have been their bread and butter. That's cool. Um, you had mentioned Sequest. That reminded me of uh, reminded me of two things. Uh, reminded me of a of a trilogy you might enjoy if you can pick it up. And I'm sure you can probably get this at a half price. But it's a uh, it's, it's called the Sea Venture trilogy. The first book is CV. Uh, which is oh, I've seen Venture CV. Pro yeah, I think I read part of CV back in the eighties. Yeah, it came out because uh, I was looking it up. It uh, came out in eighty five. The second one in eighty eight, and the third one in ninety one. That's a really good series. You should pick up the other one. It made me think of another series that if you haven't read it, I'd love for you to read it and mm -hmm. cover it here. And it's the Texas trilogy, which actually it's ended up being four books because it's oh, the Eyes uh, of Texas with yeah. by Daniel Delacruz. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the Eyes of Texas. Uh, Those are all little novellas too. They're not very long. The Eyes of Texas, Texas on the Rocks, Texas Triumphant, and I think the fourth one is Texas in Space. Um, I, you should cover those sometime because they're really good. They're really, really good. I enjoyed the Texas, the, the Texas series. So, anyway, sorry, it just made me think of think of that. No, no, CV. About. Yeah, I was, I was like, oh yeah, that's uh, the Damon Knight book. Yeah, I think yeah. I read the first, or at least part of the first CV book. I read the first one. I didn't realize it was a trilogy, and I, and I need to go back now. And now it's a trilogy because it because it definitely does continue on. But but when I thought of CV, then it made me think, oh yeah, there's another trilogy we ought to cover. Um, yeah, and hell, we also haven't covered uh, uh, Orson Scott Card. No, which we need to. Yes. Um. So. Yes. Get it, get we need. Well, I mean, if nothing else, we need to at least cover the Ender stuff. Uh. Oh, yeah. and Pass Watch. Oh my God, Pass Watch is such a great book. Yeah, Pass Watch is great. Pass Watch is great. Cool. I appreciate that. Thanks. Uh, thanks for that. It sounds. It sounds very interesting. Like I said, I never watched it. I I was aware of it, but I never mm -hmm. I never watched it. So, but it, it sounds sounds quite interesting. So I appreciate. Oh, it was that. really good. Yeah, it was really good. Cool. Uh, with that, I will take over on the murder side of the house. Murder. Uh, for today, I give my, got my information off Medium, The Sun, uh, It's Crime O'Clock Somewhere, and BBC News, a third story in a row off BBC News. Um, and this is the story of the Twilight Killers. The Twilight Killers. So in 2016, a brutal murder took place, which shook the local community and would cause them to question everything they knew about their neighbors. In Spalding, Lincolnshire, single mom uh, Elizabeth Edwards was raising her two daughters, 14-year-old Kim and 13-year-old Katie. She also had an older daughter, Mary, who was grown and not living at home. Um, Elizabeth worked uh, at the local primary school and was involved in after-school activities and a lot of charity work. Her colleagues, friends, and neighbors described her as being happy, friendly, and caring, but Elizabeth's relationship with her two daughters was very much polar opposites. Elizabeth and Katie were like best friends. They spent time together, and Katie adored her mom. Elizabeth and Kim, however, didn't get along so well, and they would frequently argue. Uh, Kim was tough. She had a strong head, and she had an attitude towards Elizabeth, which, which would regularly cause fights. Kim's frustrations with her home life uh, would cause her to struggle with her mental health, and she would regularly engage in self-harming. Uh, when Kim was just six years old, she removed from her mother. She was removed from her mother's care for six months after Elizabeth hit her in the face during an argument over a television. Holy crap! Uh, social services closed the file on the Edwards family later that same year, but Elizabeth would later say she believed Kim had never truly forgiven her. Following this, Kim and Elizabeth's relationship deteriorated further, and a young Kim struggled uh, as she grew up. In September of 2013, Elizabeth told Kim's teachers uh, her daughter was planning to run away, although by March 2014, she told them their relationship had improved. Eight months later, Kim told support workers that her mother had tried to strangle her, but this was denied by both Elizabeth and her sister. In January of 2015, Elizabeth asked uh, her general practitioner for family therapy. 
and at the start of 2015, uh, Elizabeth later in later in 2015, Elizabeth arranged for an emergency psychiatric appointment after discovering a suicide note left by Kim. Following an assessment, there was no evidence of mental illness found. Uh, but in in August at this of the same year, the Child and Adolescent Mental Health Services in Lincolnshire reported Kim's relationship with her mother mother was much better, but Kim was feeling left out of the family triangle. Uh, Kim was intensely jealous of Katie uh, and saw her as the favored child, and Kim began to feel rejected from the family. So when Kim met Lucas Markham at school, she was immediately enamored with the, this bad boy who had quickly become obsessed with her. All the insecurities she had about not being the favorite didn't matter anymore. It was her and Lucas together against the world. Lucas had had a hard start to life himself after losing his mom to leukemia when he was just four years old. His father was an abusive alcoholic and had no interest in raising the child alone, so Lucas ended up in the care of his aunt. Uh, Lucas wasn't well-liked at school and was regularly getting into fights while also displaying an unhealthy lack of emotion to those that he hurt. Kim and Lucas would develop an intense relationship and rapidly became extremely dependent upon one another. Their conversations centered around suicide and their chats took dark turns as Kim continued to self-harm. But little did people know, however, that their plans didn't stop only with self-harm, but something even more sinister was brewing. Kim and Lucas spent a lot of time together, but Kim's mother wasn't happy about this. After one episode where Kim and Lucas ran away for a week together, Elizabeth banned Lucas from her house. Elizabeth described the couple as, quote, a time bomb waiting to go off. Uh, Lucas was lashing out, hitting things, headbutting walls, and his own aunt called the, uh, called the police a few times for his behavior when she didn't know how to handle him. Um, Kim and Lucas started a sexual relationship when they were just 14 years old, and if their relationship wasn't intense enough, uh, in March 2016, Lucas found himself expelled from school, and so they were unable to see each other throughout the day. It's around this time that Kim attempted to take her own life. She took an overdose of tablets, but was uh, saved and survived. The children at school were horrible to her about it, making jokes about it uh, and calling her names. But the one person who was there for her was Lucas. Again, children at school on a tragic event. How yep. do you make jokes about that? We 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 talked about that uh, 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 two stories ago. Yes, uh, we did. Ago. Um I, I don't understand this. How do they have no sympathy that someone has tried to end their own life? Yeah. And so they're calling them names. I mean, I understand children can be cruel, but this just seems beyond to me. Yeah. I, I don't know. And, th and that could be just me being a grown ass adult and seeing things of the world a little bit differently, but I just, I couldn't imagine knowing somebody at that age and teasing them for trying to kill themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I just, I just, I just can't imagine it. Anyway. I, I'm telling you right now, I wouldn't have done it at that age. I know for no. a fact I wouldn't have. No. I mean, I'm, I'm going to grant, I wasn't always the nicest a person. I could be an asshole at times because I was extremely mm -hmm. sarcastic, but I just, mm -hmm. I just don't. Yeah. You, I, I that's just, not something to trifle with. Yeah. I just don't. Anyway. Um, on April 9th, 2016, Kim stayed over at Lucas's house, even though she wasn't allowed to, mm -hmm. uh, when she returned home, she found all of her stuff had been put into bags and her room had been cleared out. And Lucas's aunt did the same to all of his belongings. Instead of keeping them apart. However, this drove the two closer together, cementing their well, belief of course that it, it did. versus the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, April 13th was a routine day at the Edwards house, and that night everyone brushed their teeth and climbed into bed as normal, but behind the mundane family facade lay a shimmering tensions between Kim and her mom. Kim also described her younger, daughter, younger sister Katie as an angel and herself as a train wreck. She felt that her mom loved her sister, but she herself felt outside the family unit, as we had talked about before. On the morning of April 14th, 2016, there were alarms raised when Elizabeth failed to turn up for work. There was no word for her to say she was sick and no one could get a hold of her. And even more alarmingly, Kim and Katie hadn't turned up at school that day either. And more ominously, neither had Lucas. 
Uh, the school did try to contact both their families, but there was no answer. They eventually got into contact with Lucas's family, but they weren't overly concerned. According to them, Lucas and Kim had run away together just months earlier, but returned after five days in the woods. However, worried friends and family arrived at Elizabeth's house and they could hear the dog barking inside, but no one would answer the door no matter how much they knocked. So eventually the next day, the police were called and they broke into the home to do a welfare check. Uh huh. As they entered the neatly presented hallway, they turned into the front room to find Kim and Lucas curled up on a mattress watching television. Very calmly, the teenagers told them that Elizabeth and Katie were upstairs, and as the police slowly made their way to the bedrooms upstairs, an officer kept an eye on the couple. Um, matter of fact, when um, uh, one of the police officers, Alistair uh, Pullen, who was the first officer to enter the house, said that when he asked Elizabeth uh, where Elizabeth was, Lucas mm -hmm. said, uh, Lucas, quote, looked at me clean in the eye and said, why don't you go up and see? Wow. Um, upstairs would where police discovered a very horrific and tragic scene. Uh, both Elizabeth and Katie had been killed while sleeping in their beds. And from the scene in front of both of them, the police knew they had been there for a couple of days. In Katie's bedroom, which she shared with her sister, Kim, the police found a note. The note had been written by Lucas and Kim, and it was a shared suicide note. They spoke about how they wanted to be cremated and have their ashes scattered. Uh, Lucas's backpack was also found in the room and inside the police found knives and bloody clothing and there was also a bloody knife found in the room that had been left out. Um, autopsies would later show that Elizabeth had died from multiple stab wounds, some of which to, were from to her hands as she tried to defend herself. Mm -hmm. uh, two wounds to her neck had cut her jugular vein with the other almost completely severing her windpipe. Uh, however, none of her injuries were instantly fatal, and like Elizabeth was likely had been alive for a short while after being attacked. Uh, Katie had also been stabbed in the neck before being smothered with a pillow and then left in her bed. Wow. So the police immediately arrested the, the two teenagers um, and, and were in utter disbelief that, that two children could cause such a, could do such a brutal crime. Uh, Lucas refused to talk, but Kim was described as very chatty, and as a matter of fact, she showed no remorse. <clears throat> Kim started to tell the police everything right away, admitting that they had planned the murders with Lucas climbing in through the bathroom window. Kim told police that they had previously attempted it, but Kim had fallen asleep and had not been able to let Lucas in. She said that she was supposed to kill Katie, and Lucas was going to kill her mom, but Kim couldn't do it, and so Lucas carried out both attacks. Wow. It was then that Lucas agreed to speak to the police <clears throat> after he learned that Kim was speaking, and he admitted that they started to plan the murders at McDonald's. Uh, he said that he wanted to kill her mom and sister and that Kim agreed. Once the murders had taken place, <laughs> this is where they get into their, into their depravity, how far gone they were. Once the murders had taken place, they took yeah. a bath together to get clean before uh -huh. dragging a mattress downstairs and eating ice cream while they watched TV. They then had sex wow. in the front room and spent a couple of days binge watching movies, including the Twilight series, hence their nickname, The Twilight Killers. Huh. Um, during police interviews, Kim claimed that she was happy Lucas had killed her family members because, quote, my mom doesn't have to deal with me being suicidal and she doesn't have to wake up uh, worrying every morning to, and see if I'm alive. And my sister doesn't have to go through all the heartbreak and emotions and stuff. Ever since I was young, I have never got on with my mom. I knew she favored my sister more than me, even when she said she didn't. She was lying. Yeah. When she was asked how she felt about the murders of her brother, mother and sister, she replied, quote, I'm OK with it. The fact it happened so quickly gave me peace of mind because it was, wasn't like torture or anything. Um, Lucas said that Kim backed out at the last minute and hid in the bathroom while he stabbed and smothered Elizabeth and Katie. He did say that Kim had walked into her mom's room during the last moments of her life. And he also said that Elizabeth died faster than Katie. Uh, they had planned to stab them in the voice box so that they couldn't scream. The only member of the family not to be killed was Kim's oldest half-sister, Mary Cottingham, who again didn't live at the house. She lived yeah. in Derby with her husband and children. She wasn't there. Uh -uh. Prior to the killings, Mary had doubts about her sister's new intense relationship and tried to talk 
to Kim about it, but was always rebuffed. <clears throat> Mary said, quote, I thought this pair are a ticking time bomb waiting to go off. I knew straight away there was something I did not like about him. I knew he was trouble. I just didn't realize it would be, would be this extent of trouble. Um, at trial, the defense tried to use mental instability with the hopes of a manslaughter charge. All the psychological reports came back to say that neither of the two were anything but sane. Both were said to understand their consequences. Um, give me one second. Okay, apologize. Apologize for that pause. Um, <clears throat> not that the listeners really noticed anything different. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, both of them were said to have understood the consequences of their actions, and although they were unemotional and a little unstable, they were not delusional or suffering any form of mental episode when they carried out the attack. Uh, Lucas pleaded guilty to the murder after being told a manslaughter guilty plea wouldn't be accepted. Kim pleaded not guilty and went on to trial at Nottington, Nottingham Crown Court. Uh, Kim tried to blame Lucas for the murder, saying she was under his control and she was afraid of him. However, she did tell a psychi a psychiatrist, <laughs> I was about to say psychiatrist, psychiatrist, psychiatrist? <laughs> psychiatrist during the proceedings, quote, I wanted to get revenge for the way she treated me. I did it because I did not like mom at all, and I did not want her to ruin or corrupt anyone else. I did not feel anything for my mother. She deserved it, and I'm glad she's dead. Um sane uh, i don't know about that i mean yeah. they were sane's sane. a strong word yeah I, I i think they got some issues but but they they were they were cold calculating killers um uh -huh. you know i i don't know uh the jury took just two hours to find her guilty and bo uh, uh, both were sentenced to life with a minimum of 10 years uh, due to their age they both appealed and this was reduced to a minimum of 17 and a half years meaning they will both be eligible for release in their early 30s. And that's the story of the Twilight Killers. That's messed up. I agree. I agree. And like I said, I, I, I don't know that necessarily finding them sane is, is quite yeah. right. Yeah. Sane's a, uh, that's a, a strong that's a word. Yeah, yeah, that's a real strong word. Yeah, I think they're both very disturbed individuals. Um so yeah, I I, I I think those two need to be studied a little bit more. Uh just a little bit more, but you know, just, anyway. Just 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 a smidge. Just a scotch. Just yeah, just kind of let's, let's 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 talk to them a little bit. Let's find out what turned that key in their head. Yeah. Yeah. Again. Let's let's stop making these people. Well, and I, I don't see anything in 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 kim that necessarily did it except for the hitting her in the face when she was younger but yeah there wasn't anything proven past that now lucas did have an abusive father even though he eventually went to live with his aunt yeah he did have an abusive father so i think <gasps> excuse me i think there's a you know definitely something there but uh, but but they 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 both need to be studied so yes anyway thanks for joining me on that journey uh thank you that i was really appreciate it fascinating awesome well that'll take us to the end of yet another recording week we do appreciate all of you listeners for staying with us and listening um as always you can find more about us on nerderymurdery.com that's our hub our site where you can find everything about us you can find the links to what we talked about in this episode plus pictures and some videos um, as well as the link to our YouTube page, which Zig so often updates. Yes, in this particular uh, playlist, we've got uh, uh, like I, I want to say at least three, possibly four episodes, plus a bunch of things about um, Earth Two as well. Definitely get and watch the first couple of episodes because they're great, and the the quality is not bad. I mean, for basically transferred from a videotape to you know to a computer, it's pretty good shape awesome uh appreciate your work on that sure uh you can also find the link to our merchandise uh page where if you wish to show off your nerdery murdery fandom please do consider purchasing something from there that along that the the the, the proceeds from that along with uh what we get from our patreon our patrons help donate with the costs that are associated with the show 
there are costs that are associated with our with our uploads, keeping us on the air and our website and all that goes along with that. So we do appreciate each and every one of you. Please and thank you. Please and thank you. And last but not least, something you can do that's completely free, just take a few minutes of your time. If you can leave a five-star review wherever you can, it really helps us and helps others find our contact that may be looking for the topic that's, that we are discussing. And I got it through it this week. Hey! <laughs> so with that, I have been Zig with your nerdery. And I'm Jeffrey with your murdery. Cue the music.